why wouldn't you show The Rock fighting Vince Vaughn in a steel cage? Like, that should... Right? Just show me Vince Vaughn falling off a steel cage, you cowards. This is my house! <laughs> Say what? Jimmy? Hi. I'm hey, Chad. And today we're going to talk about Fighting With My Family. Fighting With My Family is the latest film from WWE Studios, a movie studio run by Vince McMahon and the WWE conglomerate that typically releases straight-to-video movies about wrestlers playing Marines or cops or, like, mercenaries or sometimes chaperones on school field trips. Basically, Vince McMahon's company is, like, huge. It has, like, it's so much money. And one of the ways he wants to try to help keep his product in the mainstream popular culture is by having a studio, a separate wing that makes movies featuring and starring his wrestlers. You know, in the heyday of WWF before, well, that's what it was called in the 80s, Hulk Hogan wasn't just a big famous wrestler, he was a movie star, he was all this stuff, he was like this big deal. So the concept of why the studio exists is generally to, you know, sort of keep those people in the limelight. In recent years, none of the WWE superstars really have quite the same level of mainstream uh, penetration so to speak like many of them don't have a, a popular kind of reach that exceeds beyond their regular wrestling viewing audience so most of these movies go straight to video they're generally taught thought of as like a laugh and uh you never see them released theatrically the difference between those movies and fight with my family is that fight with my family is co-produced by the rock a former WWE superstar who actually did successfully go on to be a movie star. The biggest movie star in the, the whole world, it turns out. And The Rock is also in the film. Clearly, Vince and everyone else involved thought, all right, well, The Rock's involved now. This is a movie we can release to the public that's like a real movie. They'll take it serious. So, Five My Family follows the true story, mostly, of Soraya Beavis. Uh, it's her real name, who went on to become WWE superstar Paige. Uh, Paige comes from a family of wrestlers. Her father, uh, Rowdy Ricky Knight, is played by Nick Frost. Her mother, uh, Sweet Soraya Knight, is played by uh, Lena Headey from Game of Thrones. And her older brother, uh, Zach Zodiac, is played by Jack Loden, who was in uh, Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. The movie mostly is concerned about the relationship between this tight-knit family of wrestlers. Uh, you know, it, it, it shows what it's like growing up with people in the business. So the thrust of the movie is about the parallel dreams of Zach and Paige. It's just easier to call her Paige than switching between all her different names throughout the film. Paige and her, her brother Zach uh, are very tight-knit, and Zach helped train her from a young age, and he trained from a young age, and they both get called in to WWE tryout. Paige is selected. Zach is not. Zach has a kid on the way, he has to stay in Norwich, England and figure out how to make his life work now, knowing that he's, you know, doesn't fit, he's, he's not going to make it. Uh, it's sad because it's sort of the same story of their older brother, who also had everybody try out and failed, and then just spiraled downwards and ended up in prison afterwards. So, Paige is then removed from her familial unit, sent to Florida to train to be a WWE superstar, and then the film follows her ascent from, you know, tryout acceptance to eventually becoming WWE Divas Champion. Anyone that knows me knows I'm a huge wrestling fan. As much as I love films, and obviously this is a film channel, I grew up on wrestling. I've watched wrestling on and off my entire life. I've watched tons of different kinds of wrestling. I've got, you know, I'm, I'm, I have friends who are wrestlers. Like, I'm I'm, uh, I'm big into, into pro wrestling. I love it. I love it to death. But I sort of feel like this is one of those movies where if you actually like pro wrestling, and then you watch it, you're going to enjoy the film considerably less than the average film goer who might just be watching it as like a romp, like just like an average family comedy or what have you. If you've ever actually watched wrestling or you know the product at all, it's very strange how many different things they changed. And many of those things are changed for clarity's sake, obviously, but some of them are changed in a way that's just confusing if you if you actually know her real life. Uh, a big part of that is that WWE produces documentaries and films and things that, that clearly show that like wrestling is fake. You know, it's predetermined, it's not real, quote-unquote. But when you watch them, they always sort of break kayfabe in this, like, halfway thing. If you watch the reality TV show Total Divas, a show that Paige was a cast member on, you know that the stories are scripted, and that they're all performers, and they're playing characters, and they're telling stories. But it never gets too deep into the minutiae of how that process works, 
because they expect people that watch Monday Night Raw to also watch Total Divas. And if they show you every little trick in the book about the way things work and all the, you know, how the sausage is made, watching Raw is just a lot weirder if they acknowledge those things. Fight With My Family is very similar in that it takes the basic broad strokes of what the average person knows about how pro wrestling works, the idea that it's scripted, that people play characters, that they have to cut promos and, and, they, and the matches are all involved cooperation to tell a story. But it makes those things as like flat and like simple as possible, so it feels it's reductive, but on purpose. It's reductive so that that stuff doesn't cloud the emotional arc of the movie. It's so that the audience doesn't get trapped up in figuring out like how do holds work, uh, what is what is a receipt, you know that type of stuff, and more just focusing on oh this is Paige, this is her story. She's in Florida. She's away from her family. How is she feeling? It makes sense. I totally get it from a storytelling perspective, but. As a wrestling fan, as someone that knows a lot of the real stuff of her story, it's distracting. Every other scene, I was finding myself going, okay, who is that supposed to be? All of the background characters are composites of several different actual key WWE figures. So, for instance, Vince Vaughn plays Hutch Morgan, the WWE head trainer who is also responsible for personally calling talent and setting up tryouts and hiring people like, that's not a real role in the wwe he's sort of a composite of like six different people in one which is fine uh because it's a movie it's just weird because like if you've ever watched anything or know anything about wrestling you're like that one person wouldn't do all those jobs that's weird it's the equivalent of you watched a movie about making movies and the director was like also the producer and the screenwriter and the cinematographer and like the key grip and just all these different things you just know that's not how film sets work you've, you've watched behind the scenes footage before that said if you were just like a regular normal non-wrestling obsessed person that threw this movie on or went to it on a weekend in february because nothing else was out it's fun it's a lot of fun i think florence Pugh, who plays Paige, is incredible she sounds like Paige, looks a little bit like Paige. i think that uh, Lena Headey and Nick Frost as her parents are like amazing and I kind of wish the entire movie was about them they're just so much fun like Nick Frost playing like sort of a down and out pro wrestler slash promoter like huckster guy is like such a blast like that that should be a whole fucking movie you know it's so much fun and, and exciting to watch a story about a family who's bonded by like this one trade you know that one trade could be anything this could be like a family of cops or like a family of like ex-soldiers or what have you like the core story about this family unit is actually really interesting and it's funny too it's like actually really funny so why doesn't it work if if wwe studios went out of their way to make a movie releasing it in the mainstream in you know uh, releasing it theatrically co-producing it with the rock having the rock in the movie for no reason having the rock in all the trailers how come it only made like $8 million this past weekend? If they were going to go out of their way to make a movie not for wrestling fans, but for the average person, how come the average person didn't come to see it? The issue and why the film's not as successful as I think it could have been isn't the actual content and how accurate or not accurate it is to pro wrestling fans. It's the fact that the movie just looks cheap as shit. You know, this movie looks worse than any of the Marine movies they made with The Miz. It just looks like a really cheap, like, sub tv movie level thing it's not the ugliest movie steven merchant isn't like a great visual stylist i don't think that's a surprise to anybody but man it looks like snl has digital shorts that look more cinematic than this movie i think that that chintziness can really be felt in the trailer that they play constantly on television and i think the average person who's turned off by wrestling would see that and just go i'm not gonna watch that that looks like some cheap wrestling thing I think if they had made more of an effort to make the movie visually appealing, making it look more competent, more striking, just more, like, engaging, you know? I mean, like, people watch Glow. A lot of people watch Glow on Netflix that don't like wrestling, you know, because Glow looks like a fun show. It looks like an interesting thing. It looks nice. I think that's the biggest uh, mistake they made. I think this is a good step in the right direction for WWE Studios to make more movies that you can go see in theaters and aren't, like, jokes on, on demand or, you know, Blu-ray or whatever. But I still think that the movie itself is just too far removed from, like, looking like a movie anyone would want to keep their eyes on for more than, like, an hour. Out of my family, I think it's a fun movie. I think you should see it probably on home video. I don't know that you should really leave the house for this one. Uh, but it's interesting, and it's exciting, and somehow manages to end on a really bright, fun note and not have to go into the fact that the end of Paige's career was depressing and she's injured and can't wrestle anymore and had a bunch of her nudes leaked and people treated her like trash and... Yeah.
So yay for happy endings. That's it for this week, folks. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you next week.